I don't know what yeah, they are. I, I managed to forget to hit the record. But oh, okay. Yeah. 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 Oh, right. yeah. yeah. Okay. I mean, yeah. I mean, I mean, that sound was the the Chinese in uh, it's being recorded. But anyway, <laughs> let's move on. Okay. And similarly, so we say XB is LC. So LC stands for log canonical and KRT stands for Kalamata log terminal. But anyway, we just use this simplifi simplifications. So LC just means zero LC and KRT just means zero KRT, uh, which stands for that the coefficient of BY are less than or equal to one and the case when the coefficient of BY are less than one respectively. So S is called epsilon LC if X zero, if this pair is epsilon LC and so on for epsilon KRT, LC and KRT and so on. So an epsilon LC uh, word X is, automatic, is automatically assumed that KX is Q, that X is Q constant. That is in that KX is automatically Q cartier in this case. So, let me see if there are any questions. No. Okay. So let me give you some elementary e e examples for uh, for uh, the singularities in particle geometry. So let's say we have a smooth variety. Then x x itself will be one log canonical because x is just the resolution of itself and there is no boundary. So let's say we have a smooth variety and a boundary B, which is a simple normal crossing divisor. So in this case, this pair XB is not canonical, but not KRT. Because I mean, we assume that B is a simple normal crossing divisor, so the sum of the coefficient is one. But still X is a log x to x itself is a log resolution of xb. So there are some more concrete examples. So let's say x is a cone over an elliptic curve. So in this case, x is log canonical, but not KRT. The last example is more complicated. So let's say we have a cone over a rational curve of degree n. Then in this case, we can calculate that the total minimal log discrepancy is equal to two over n. So in this case, x is two over n log canonical, but not a two over n KRT. So actually, you can find that the only divide the, the only divisor uh, over x with coefficient one minus two over n is attained by the blow up of the vertex of this cone. All right, so here we have done with the elementary definitions for singularities in bicycle geometry. So why are, these, why are these singularities useful? So we also get back to the questions as we listed before. And now let's say we want to consider a pair with either KRT or log canonical or absolute log canonical singularities. So what we expect is that the asymptotic linear system associated with Ks plus B are expected to behave nicely. So there are three cases. The first case is when this Kx plus B is very positive. So the thing that Kx plus B is big. And in this case, we actually say that Xb is of log general type or of general type. The second is less positive, but it's still positive. So we want to say, we want to assume that Kx plus B uh, has an effective divisor class. I mean, its quadratic dimension is not negative, but Kx plus B is not big anymore. The third case is when Kx plus B is negative. That is when negative Kx plus B uh, has an effective divisor class. So we will discuss these three cases uh, uh, very soon, um, and we will talk about what those questions will behave 
under these three cases. So the first case is when kx plus b is big. And at a certain point, we want to consider the case when this b is zero. So let's start with the most simplest case. The case when x is of general type. And let's say x is smooth and kx itself is big. So in this case, we have this result by Hickman Kernan and Takayama independently uh, based on some idea of Fuji. So we have a satisfactory answer for all the questions as I did it before in this case. So what they prove is that, so let's say X is a smooth projective variety of six dimension, such that it is of general type that is saying that the canonical class of X is B. Then we know that there always exists a positive integer M1, which only depends on the dimension of X, such that the linear system given by M1 times Kx defines a bidirectional map. So this perfectly, this perfectly, this perfectly answers the question, I mean, all the three questions as I listed at the beginning of this talk. So in fact, this result by Heckerman Kern and Takayama can be generalized uh, uh, to, uh, can be to the category of all log canonical pairs. So we have this result by Heckerman and Kern and Xu, which says that let's say we have a projective log canonical pair of six dimension such that it is of log general type. That is saying that, let's be assume that kx plus b is big. We need, to, we need to additionally assume that the coefficient of b belong to such a DCC set, gamma. So this DCC assumption may not be so natural to you, but I mean, this is actually um, the, uh, some, some, some kind of natural sets that appear in the uh, inversion geometry. So for, for, for example, if we do, uh, if we use the adjunction formula, then such DCC set will, automatic, will automatically appear. So here, this DCC means that every descending chain will stabilize. So for example, this set one minus one over N, where N varies in the set of all positive integers, so this is a DCC set, but the, the set of one over n, where n varies from all the positive, positive integers, this is not a DCC set because, well, I mean, we can just, uh, I mean, we can just pick n from one to infinity, and then we get a strictly decreasing sequence. So anyway, let's back get back to the theorem. So the theorem says that so under these conditions then there will always exist a positive integer m2, which only depends on the dimension and this coefficient set, such that the linear system given by m2 times kx plus b always defines a bidirectional map. So I want to make some further re remark here because like here, so kx plus b may only be a Q divisor or even an R divisor. So in this case, this M2 times K plus B may not be an integral divisor, but we can still define a linear system as the rundown of, uh, of M2 K plus, plus B, of the linear system corresponding to the rundown of M2 times K plus B. So this is, so these two examples show that uh, we not, not only expect good properties to hold only for varieties, but we also expect similar good properties to hold for uh, pairs with log canonical singularities. So this is the most uh, simple case when X is of general type or of log general type. So let's move on for the second case. When X is only assumed to be positive, 
So let's say X is smooth, and let's say its canonical divisor has an effective divisor class, but KX is not big. So in this case, we cannot get a completely satisfactory answer, but we can still get, so I will say it's a sub satisfactory answer. So this is a result by Picard and John, which says that, so let's say we have a smooth projective variety uh, with non-negative quaternion dimension. Then there exists a positive integer m, uh, depending only on these three constants, the dimension of x, the middle fashion number, beta f of the canonical cover of a bi-regional fiber from the, uh, from the Ithaca fiberation f, and also this bf, the non version out of kf, such that the linear system given by mkx is by original to the inner configuration of Kx. So, well, so I call it a sub satisfactory result because what we expect is that, uh, is that this M should only depend on the dimension of X and should not depend on either beta F or BF. So uh, I want to further remark that, so this theorem can be generalized to the class of any log canonical pairs. But I mean, there are just uh, too much technical complexity and, a, and at the moment it has never been written down precisely. Can I ask, what's the meaning of non-vanishing order of KF? Okay, so, so KF is a divisor, right? So it just means, so, so, so BF is so BF just means the the minimal positive integer such that BF such, such that the inner system of BF KF is not uh, is non empty. Ah, thanks. Yes. So that is I mean so that is uh, also a non vanishing question which I will also discuss later. So anyway, so we 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 want this M not to rely on beta f and bf. But here we can only uh, have m that relies on dimension beta f and bf. So it is natural to ask if we can bound beta f and bf. So, well, we have some satisfactory answer for the boundedness of beta f and bf when the dimension of f is less or equal to two. Uh, however, in dimension greater or equal to three, very unfortunately, it seems that the boundness of beta f is a difficult question. And it seems that it is out of reach for current bidirectional geometry because it has many relationships with other areas in algebraic geometry and even representation theory. On the other hand, the boundness of BF is a more reasonable question. So if we assume uh, that uh, some, uh, some uh, big conjectures in the, in the model program, like the termination of sleeves, then the boundaries of BF can be transformed into the following question. So I call this question as the non-vanishing for Calabi-Yau varieties. So let's say we have a KRT colored Yaw variety of bounded dimension or of fixed dimension. So this uh, colored Yaw just means that uh, it is Q linearly equivalent to zero. Then we want to ask, does there exist a positive integer I depending only on this dimension D? such that I times the canonical class KF is linearly equivalent to zero. And you can see that once this is, is true, then clearly the linear system uh, given by I times KF uh, is non-vanished. And then, I mean, so, and then, I mean, for the Ithaca fabrication question, 
if we have the termination of leaves, then we can just run a KF MMP, which terminates with a KLT color beyond what right. And then we can apply this, this question and then bound BF. So I will just leave this question here. So this is an interesting question, but uh, I will not talk about this at this moment, but maybe I'll come back to this later in this talk. And so now let's move on to the last case when X is not positive. So clearly when KF is not effective, in many cases, if you want to study the geometry of X, so you want to look into the linear system given by negative mkx instead of mkx for positive integers m. So we want to assume that negative m times kx is non-empty at least for some positive integer m. All, they, all, all, all this linear system will be empty and there is uh, uh, no, nothing left to talk about. So let's go in this case. So let's say negative mkx is not empty, at least for some positive integer m. Then for this type of varieties, the following types, the following three types are of our special interest. So the first case is when x admits an LC log capital structure. So you see that we have such a boundary divided B, such that XB is now canonical and KX plus B is numerically trivial. So we also emphasize that, I mean, the case, I mean, this non vanishing for class beyond varieties is also included in this case because we just let B equal to zero and we are done. So the second case is more special. It's the X is of final type. So the thing that, so let's say XB is KLT and negative KX plus B is ample for some boundary R divided B. The last case is, is even more straightforward when we assume that X is final or weak final. So the thing that, so X itself is Q Gornstein and KLT and negative KX is ample or big enough. So these are the three important cases we want to look into. So again, we also similarly uh, try, uh, try to prove similar results like the non-vanishing and effective version entity. But unfortunately, so the effective version entity does not behave so well when this X is negative. So for example, we have this following counter example on effective version entity even for services. So in this case, we let this x n plus one to be a general hypersurface of degree n plus one in the weighted projective space P111 n. Then we know that x n plus one is KLT final. But on the other hand, we can find that negative m times K n plus one so this would be kx n plus one. So this linear system does not define a bidirectional map whenever m is less than n over two. And therefore in this case, this KRT assumption, I mean, must be strengthened. And if we replace this KRT with absolute log canonical assumption, then we do have effective version entity, which is proved by Picard. So what we can prove is that, so let's say we have an epsilon log canonical variety X of final type of fixed dimension. Then there exists a uniform positive integer M such that negative M K X defines a bi regional map. So, I mean, this may look satisfactory, but actually, although it looks satisfactory, uh, this result is later covered by because proof of the boris of boris of or the simple SBAB conjecture, which says that well, for those absolute canonical final type varieties, 
they actually belong to abundant family. So we cannot tell more about, uh, I mean, so the effective virtuality result will be automatic. And I mean, that literally tells us about nothing. And another bad thing here is that even if we assume this absolute not canonical assumption, uh, effective personality will not hold even for pairs with DCC coefficients. So we have this counter example by Han and myself last year. So we know that so there exists such, um, so three over 10 log canonical projective surface pairs X, V, N. So here X is even fixed. So we have these pairs with negative Kx plus B to be ample. And Bn has DCC coefficients. But I mean, those, those uh, linear systems course, uh, that are associated with uh, Kx plus Bn uh, does not have good effective version of anti properties. So therefore, well, what's the flavor? What's the flavor of those? Like, where do the the previous example was like a hypersurface in something in uh, weighted projective space? What's the flavor of these? Okay, so so for this example, so this X is an exceptional surface. So I mean, uh, yes. So this X is an exceptional surface of Picard number one, and this boundary B n. I mean, uh, so so anyway, so. Uh, so let me see. Oh yes, I mean, so this X itself, I think this is also, uh, uh, let me see. So I think this X itself is actually a weighted pro projective space. Uh, if I remember that that's correctly, I think X, so let me write that down. So if I re 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 remember correctly, uh, I think X should be something like P2359 or, uh, or a uh, uh, weighted hypersurface inside that. I mean, I don't remember that very clearly. I mean, I can check that later for you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, 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 yeah. Just, yeah, just, so, the flavor, just the flavor is great, thanks. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, I mean, so, yeah, 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 so, yeah. I mean, yeah, so, so this P2359, so this is a threefold. So X, so let me see. I think X is, so if I if I remember correctly, I cannot guarantee now and check that. So I think it it, it should be a uh, hyperplane of degree eighteen. Yes, I think X should be a, a general hypersurface of degree eighteen inside P two three five nine. Okay. So anyway, so uh, if we cannot expect effect to perfection anti, so what can we expect? Because we are, we are asked, so let's say we only consider KRT final varieties, but without this absolute canonical assumption. So can we still find some kind of distinguished representative G inside a bounded multiple of the system of KX, which satisfies some kind of good properties? So, and what so in this case, Picard gave us a positive answer, which said that, okay, so let's say we have a KRT variety of final type. And then there exists a positive in integral N depending only on the dimension of X, such that uh, there exists a representative G inside the linear system given by negative nkx, such that the pair x one over n times g is log canonical. And in particular, in this case, negative nkx, uh, the, linear system, the linear system negative nkx itself is non empty. So here comes to the our main definition of this talk about confidence. So this x one over n times g is called an n complement of x zero. So, so let's briefly talk about this. So, what the property this n complement has? So, what the easy check? So, first of all, it is log canonical, 
and then the coefficient of g are bounded. And even more, so n times k plus g is literally equivalent to zero. So similarly, if we want to uh, try to uh, generalize this is case to the category of pairs. So we also ask, so what can we say when we start with a pair xg rather than a variety x? And we also, so, so therefore we want to formally define this theory of confidence for pairs. So this is a technical definition, but anyway, let me go it, go it through. So let's say we have a pair x, b, and let's say we give a positive integer n. Then an n complement of x, b is a pair x, b plus, satisfying these three following properties. So for that, x, b plus is log canonical. The second is that n times k, x plus b plus is literally equivalent to zero. And the last is, uh, is a condition on the coefficients of B plus. So we say a few more about these conditions. So for the second condition, so we do require linear equivalence rather than Q linear equivalence or R linear equivalence. And for two and this, uh, this the last condition three. So they together will guarantee that this linear system, this asymptotic linear system associated with kx plus b is not empty once there is an n complement of xb. So these are both technical assumptions, but I mean, they are actually uh, introduced to guarantee that non-vanishing holds. So this is the whole purpose of condition three. So now, uh, if we want to have su such good structure on the non-vanishing for pairs, then we have this uh, short growth conjecture on boundness of continents. So what do we have here? So let's say we have a log canonical pair of fixed dimension and of final type. And let's say that the coefficient of the boundary belong to a DTC set, let's say it's gamma. And let's say that negative kx plus b is nas. Then it is conjectured by Shawcross that there will always exist an n complement xb plus of xb for some positive integer n. But I mean, what Shawcross conjectured, he does not conjecture that there exists a uniform n, but he conjectured that there exists a, a final set and we can choose n from this set to uh, such that an n complement exists. So now we have moved on to the main result of, of, of our talk today is my joint work with Han Shawcross, which said that, well, Shawcross conjecture holds. And unexpectedly, we can even choose a uniform positive integer n to make the conjecture hold. And in particular, what this can show is that there exists a uniform n depending only on the dimension and the boundary set, such that this associated inner system is not empty. Is there any question? I nope. I think I, I had some, but they were answered on that. Okay, sure. Okay. And moreover, so this theorem can even be strengthened to the relative case. So this is also proved by me, Han Shawcroft. So this is just the relative case of the, pre, of the theorem that we have just talked about. So, but in this case, we assume that there is a contraction x to z. The dimension assumption and the coefficient assumption are not changed, but this time we assume that x b is of final type over z and negative k for b is nap over z. And in this case, we also have such boundness of n continents. So for this theorem, 
So, I mean, this is just similar to the previous theorem. I mean, for the previous theorem, we can just take C equal to a point. And then this theorem will deduce the global version of the previous theorem. So for this, um, for this theorem, we, we proved, so it has been shown in the following cases. The first case is for services, and when the coefficient of B belong to the standard set. So standard set means the set of one minus one over N, uh, where N belong to positive integers. And the second case is when we have a threefold, and the coefficient of B belong to a finite rational set. And the last case is the case when the coefficient of B belong to a finite rational set, which was proved by B B car. Okay, can I ask, what's the meaning of phenotype over Z? So the so phenotype, uh, so, okay, so phenotype uh, just means that, so, 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 uh, so let's say we have a pair x d such that negative classical d is is ample over z, and x d is oh, and x d is k or t. This is just what final type over z means. It's just the uh, I mean so final type means that it we have such d which makes negative class plus d to be ample. So over z just means it's ample over z. Is that clear? Yeah, thanks. Okay. So although they need technical, so our theorem on condiments is expected to have many applications. So uh, the first uh, uh, application we'll mention is the application uh, only by Picard's theorem, uh, who proved the case for finite rational coefficients. So this result has already has many applications. The most important is the BBAB theorem, that is just the BAB conjecture proved by B. Carr. The second most important is the YTD conjecture proved by Yu Chen Liu, Xu, and Zhuang just by last week. And it can also be applied to many important conjectures in case stability theory, like the Johnson Mustafa conjecture, the openness of case semi stability, and the this conjecture on minimizers of normalized volumes. And also like the Dmai Collab openness conjecture. And also like a uh, result on log cloud BL fabrications. So in the following part of the talk, I will talk about the application of our main theorem on comments to the study of local singularities questions. So we also emphasize that, I mean, for the cases we want to apply, the result of the car is not strong enough, but our main theorem, uh, but, but I mean, our result for DCC co coefficients remains useful. So we also talk about its application to local singularity. So let me briefly introduce this concept of minimal log discrepancies. So as we introduced early in this talk, let's say we have a log canonical pair with a log resolution, and we write k by plus by as a pullback of k x plus b. Then the total minimal log discrepancy is just the one minus the maximum coefficient of by. So, so now let's say we do not consider a pair, but let's say we consider a germ. So a germ just consider just just uh, consists of a pair and a close point x, a close point small x. So in this case, let's say we take a sufficiently high log resolution, and still write k by plus by as the pullback of k plus b. Then we define the minimal log discrepancy or MLD for for short for the germ x b. Uh, also as one minus the multiplicity of by and take the minimum. But here we take the multiplicity along divisors whose centers are x, are small x. So the most important conjecture on this invariance of local singularities is this ACC conjecture for MLDs, which was pro proposed by Shawcroft in 1988, saying that if we have an LC term of fixed dimension, 
and assume that the coefficient of the boundary B belong to a DCC set. Then the MLD should belong to an ACC set. So here, so ACC, which is a uh, controversial to the DCC, is saying that every increasing chain stabilizes. So similarly for the previous examples, so the set of one over M is an ACC set, but the set of one minus one over n is not an HCC set because we can just take n from one to positive infinity and get a strictly interesting safe sequence. So this, so the HC conjecture for MLDs is an important kind of conjecture in Bayesian geometry. And the key reason is that it has a very tight connection with the conjecture on transition of flips which is the core conjecture of the minimum model program. So it is proved by Shawcross that the ACC for MLDs and another conjecture, the lower simple continuity conjecture for MLDs, they together will imply the termination of flips. So uh, although it's, it's very important, only very few cases for the ACC conjecture is known. So we know the service case by NCF and Shawcross, the total case by Borisov and Ambro. But I mean, in high dimensions, only very specific cases are known, like in dimension three for cautious singularities and for fixed terms. So only very cases in, under this condition are known. So by using our theorem of, of complements, we actually find a new way to tackle this ACC contract for MLDs. And we can prove the following results. So the first result is also in my joint work with Han Shawcroft, saying that if the singularity itself is exceptional, then, uh, then this MLD belongs to an ACC set. So the only additional assumption is this exceptional. So this is the first result on non-toric varieties regarding the ATC contract for MLDs for arbitrary DCC coefficients and in all dimensions. What's the definition of exceptional? And that is what I'm, I'm going to talk about. Okay, perfect. So exceptional, so I mean, I'll just give some, uh, uh, so this exceptionality, I mean, they are, they are defined with some technicality, but I mean, uh, for the surface case, these exceptional singularities just correspond to the E type singularities. So you can just uh, imagine that uh, like in high, di high dimensions, they are just uh, the generalization of these E type singularities in the ADE classifications. So, uh, so what we expect is that, so to, to prove the ATC conjecture for MLDs, in full generality, we do expect that we need to combine our method on continents uh, in the proof of the ACC for several similarities uh, with the toric method, which was like the method of Borisov and Ambro when they proved the ACC for toric pairs. Why is that? Because, well, so we, we can see that, I mean, like in the surface classification of singularities, so exceptional singularities are of E type. And this A type singularities are toric. So for so this D type singularities, they are also called those weakly exceptional singularities, which means that, that they behave similar to these exceptional singularities. So I mean, these E type singularities are usually uh, considered uh, to be the, the far, furthest from being toric. So for the rare singularities, I mean, they are like between established singularities and toric singularities. So we expect that we need to combine both methods together to give a full proof for the conjecture. Wait, the, are, 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 are you saying you think you have hope for proving the full conjecture? Yes, yeah, I, I mean, I mean, yes, right. I mean, I think there is hope. I mean, by combining our methods and the and the methods to, to prove the toric case. 
I mean, we, we probably need to combine these two methods together to prove the conjecture in full. Because I mean, like this E type are the, the most non toric singularities. And we know that this case. And also this, those A type are the most toric case. And we also know that case. So it seems to us that, I mean, all the rats similarities are between these two case cases. And that's why we expect that, I mean, once they combine these methods together, we can have a proof. But I mean, we still don't know how to do that yet. Okay, so uh, let's move on for another application of the continuous theorem to MLDs. So by our theorem on comments, we also have the following result, which was proved by myself in 2018, which said that for non canonical singularities, this ATC conjecture for MLDs is equivalent to the ATC conjecture for epsilon log canonical circles for non canonical singularities. So this epsilon log canonical circle. It is just uh, an algebraic invariant of an R cardiac, R cardiac divisor with respect to a pair, uh, which is the largest uh, number to make the pair still epsilon log canonical. So it is conjectured that if the dimension of F is fixed and the coefficient of B and D are DCC, then the absolute log canonical threshold will also satisfy the ATC. So this is a so-called ATC conjecture for absolute log canonical threshold. So both emphasize that so this conjecture is always expected to be uh, to be e easier than the ATC conjecture for MLDs. And the key reason is that the absolute is zero. This is just this. Uh, this ACC for zero log canonical threshold is was proved by Haker, Michael, and Xu, which is just the famous ACC for log canonical thresholds. So my result uh, actually tells you that uh, by using the theory of continents, so it's likely that the ACC conjugate for MLDs is not really harder than the ACC for absolute log canonical thresholds. And they are expected to, to offer the same difficulty. So, well, so maybe I will give, I still have, have some time. So maybe I will briefly talk about the key ideas on how to apply the theorem of comments to the study on local singularities. So let's say we start with the KLC germ of fixed dimension. Then because it is KLT, then X is of final type over itself because any divisor will be ample over itself. And the only assumption will be that KLT, but I mean, this is by our assumption. So by using the theory of continents to the local case, we know that there is an n complement X B plus of B. And this complement will satisfy the following properties. The first is that n times kx plus b is Cartier near this point, near this term x. The second is that we know that this pair is log canonical near small x. So the most important condition is the first one because n times kx plus b plus is Cartier. This tells us that if we pull back n times kx plus b plus, we should always get an integral divisor for any bidirectional morphism F. And therefore, so the coefficient of this B by plus uh, are controlled very well. And also because X B plus is not canonical. Uh, y B, B Y plus is also not canonical. And therefore, there are many good properties of this auxiliary divisor B by plus, and then they have studied the behavior of B by using the auxiliary divisor B by plus. And this is a key idea how our theorem on comments can be applied to the study on local singularities. So there are also some other applications of our common theorem. So I just list a table here and I will not go into the de details. 
so uh, so so I would like to emphasize that for all these results, we do need our theorem for R three DCC coefficients rather than any finite rational coefficients. So I still have two minutes, so maybe I'll just just skip this part and move on for something interesting. So this is, is like an opposite application of the MLD back to the theory of confidence. So let's recall the question which we mentioned earlier in this talk on this non-vanishing for collective Yau varieties. So let's say, so, so this question is still wide open in the high dimensions. But in 2019, so Jiang have this very interesting result. So the first result is about the minimal log discrepancy of some non-canonical threefold. So he proved that uh, it always has, so for non-canonical Q constant threefold X, its minimal log discrepancy has a gap with one. So this is just a very small case of the ACC for minimal log discrepancies. And actually, so this gap delta has been, uh, has, been, uh, has been shown that we can take delta to be one over 13 by, by a word of, of myself and, and, and Xiao later, but I mean, this is out of the topic for today. But what I want to talk about is that, so this result can actually prove this non-vanishing for type Yau varieties in dimension three. And I mean, we, we do need this result on, on MLDs to prove this non-vanishing result. And actually, if we see this clear more precisely, this IKF in this equal to zero can be rephrased as F zero is an I complement of itself. And in this case, F is not of final type, but the bonding of, of complement still holds. So we can still ask if the bonding of complement holds for pairs of the meeting low canonical collabial structures that are not necessarily of final type. And in dimension three, by applying just result in handle short graph, we have this positive answer for any log canonical pairs for the meeting a log class of structure. So maybe I can stop here. I mean, there are still uh, several slides for some open questions, but I don't think I have time. So maybe, maybe it's just a good place to stop. And thank you for listening. Great. Okay. Let's uh, unmute ourselves and thank you now for uh, for for a, a very informative and enlightening talk. Great. Uh, questions and uh, questions or comments. One question I have is what's the de what's the definition? So it, it's like uh, exceptional singularities. Can you say more about what the definition is? And yes, what, yes. Uh, where are so, they the opposite of toric, uh, toroidal? Well, yes, I mean, so, okay. So let, let me get back to, to, to this. So, okay, so for the, okay. So uh, so maybe I, maybe it's better to write, write something down. Maybe I'll just type here. So, so, so let's say we have an, so let's say it is called an, so let's say we have we have a germ which is called an uh, let's say this uh, is called an exceptional uh, singularity. So 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 this this is actually saying that so for for any G such that okay so so the definition is it, it, it just that I mean for for any G any effective G such that this pair uh, x n plus g is log canonical. Uh, this pair x b plus g uh, has at most one log, can log can canonical place. So this is the definition for exceptional similarities. So I mean, I mean, th I mean, this may may feel not so natural, but I mean. So I, I can give you some further information. So this one log kind of play, place uh, just means that the, the dual graph of x b, b plus g is a point. I mean, or, or, or maybe, maybe I should write dual co complex of 
every bit of J. So I mean, I mean, like one can actually get get into the dimension of this dual comp complex practice. So like for I mean, like the dimension for any such dual, dual complex, I mean, they should be varied from the ring from zero to the to dimension x minus one. And I mean, like here, we actually prove the, the case when the dual complex has the most uh, simplest uh, structure. Yes. Great. Could I ask a question? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Uh, now I know uh, what is Itaka vibration. I'm sorry for the question, but I don't know. Could you tell me briefly? Uh, oh, 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 so, so you, you are just talking about the definition of eta car fabrication. That's mm -hmm. right. Right. I mean, okay. So, so that's simple. I mean, so, so let's say we have a a a, a, a divider d, a divider d, uh, with uh, with uh, so, so let's just for, so let's just say d is effective, and then for and you can should write So here, uh, I, I just say that all the coefficients of D are now negative. Then for M uh, sufficiently uh, large, then for M sufficiently large, so, so the, the, the map, which is given by the linear system MD, so it, it, it's, a, it's a map to uh, Projective space, and I mean, so we will just then consider the image of uh, of this of X to uh, I mean, we have, so so let's say the the the, the image of, of X is Z, and then I mean, and then I mean, this this kind kind of map will be the maps that are called biregional to the uh by original to the uh itaka fibration of uh of d and and also i mean so if we so if we take a resolution so so let's say y to x uh and so so that y to z is so that by today is a morphism, then this will be called an Ithaca fabrication of D. Yes. Thank you very much. Uh, 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 okay. Uh, more, more. more more questions or comments? If not, then let's thank you all again. That's a good talk. Okay, yeah, and yeah, okay, and yeah, and again, I'd like to thank you for listening and thank Professor 